Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So another video in bonding and molecular structure. So let's get moving. Bam! Today we're talking about valence bond theory in a little bit more detail than what we have talked about before. So valence bond theory, we're going to be using what's called VESPER, which is the valence shell electron pair repulsion. So what does that do? That gives us a three-dimensional arrangement of a molecule's atoms in space based on the concept that charges will orient themselves in such a way as to diminish the repulsion between them. That is, electrons are negatively charged and they don't like to be near each other. So they are going to physically move away from each other as far away as possible three-dimensionally. That will give us a shape. Okay, VESPER leads to a molecular geometry of either a molecule or an ion. And we're going to use an axe to determine the shape of the molecule based on this set of rules. So number one, you're going to first draw the Lewis dot structure. Any resonance structure will do. If you don't know what a resonance structure is, stay tuned. We're going to be talking about that later on another day. Okay, number two, you're going to count up the electron pairs the domains around the central element, that is, the bonding and the lone pairs. Those are domains around the central element. Okay, multiple bonds, that's number three, count as one particular region. So it doesn't matter if it's a double bond or a triple bond, that's still a domain, a single domain around the central atom. Number four is we're going to determine the shape based on the positions of the atoms and moving them as far away as possible three-dimensionally. So you got to be thinking three-dimensionally here. Okay, so here we go. The axe. What is the axe? The axe is the A is the central element of the axe. The X are the surrounding elements around the central element. And the E is a lone pair or lone pairs of electrons on the central element. Okay, they are on the A. Okay, they are not lone pairs on the X's. Those do not count for our Vesper shape. We don't care about lone pairs on the X's. We only care about the lone pairs on the central element. Okay, so here is a possibility. Our central element is the A. And we have that X marks the spot pattern or the plus sign. Hopefully you remembered that. That's where that central element goes. The least electronegative element in the middle, but never hydrogen. And now we place elements around this. That is a particular shape. Now, every now and then what we can do is we can replace one of these X's, which is an element, with a lone pair of electrons. We can do that yet again and we get that shape. Okay, And this will be based on the 3D arrangement of this will have a name of this shape. Okay, now we can do this another way. We can do this with either five or six domains here. This is giving you the maximum number with the six domain structure here. We can have all six elements surrounding this. This is obviously, hopefully, at least for me, this is obviously exceeding the octet rule here. So this must be period three or greater um, elements. Okay, and you can replace some of these outside elements with lone pairs of electrons, and then you get a new type of structure each and every time that you do that. You can also have five domains. I don't have that right here, but you can replace uh, a do bonding domains with lone pairs as well. Okay, you're going to first determine your X. There's only one A, and there could be multiple X's, and there might be multiple E's. There might not be any E's on the central element. Based on the X, then we're going to get the name. Okay, and that is another video, and no sharks around here. Give me a thumbs up if you like that video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'm going to see you next time for more cool chemistry videos. Yeah!